Welcome to the Hoops Royalty Podcast. I'm King Jimison. Here with Karna Venkatraj. And we are here live at halftime of the Memphis Grizzlies versus Los Angeles Lakers. Game two of the Western Conference first round. And the Grizzlies, down John Morant. Of course, down Steven Adams and Brandon Clark. Lead by 15 at halftime. Lead 59-44. So obviously, we're feeling great. But Karna, just give us your take on the first half of this game. Um, Xavier Tillman is making me a believer, I think. Um, but, you know, points in the paint look good. We look like we're pushing the ball. Desmond Bain has came to play. Um, you know, it, it, it just looks like the Grizzlies are ticking. And they're and they it looks like uh, Taylor Jenkins did a really good job after that next game answering some of the defensive questions regarding the Lakers role players. So I'm happy to see that. I think we look good. I think we're ticking. Um, and I'm, 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 I'm excited for the next half. What about you, King? The first player you mentioned is the guy we got to start with, and that is Mr. Xavier Tillman Sr., who had a, an objectively horrible game in Game 1, was basically um, ineffective against Anthony Davis and the Lakers' front line. But in this game, he has 12 points on 6 of 7 shooting, including 6 rebounds. Uh, one of those was an offensive board. He's been holding his own on defense against both Anthony Davis and LeBron, this is the Tillman Grizzlies fans have come to know and love over the past few seasons. The guy who can fill in and take on any role. If he continues doing this, the Grizzlies have a great chance to win the game. And another thing, the guy looks strong against Anthony Davis, plus 12. So he's playing some defense, too. And I, and I think, you know, he he's a valuable addition to this team. And, and he's proving why he's, he's in the starting lineup um, and against this larger physical uh, Lakers team. And that goes to a wider advantage for the Grizzlies. They are kicking the Lakers' butts and points in the paint. Nobody saw that coming. Grizzlies lead 38-20 to 20 in that department. Listen, if you told me the Grizzlies were up by 15 at halftime without John Morant before the game, I would have said, all right, they're going ballistic from three. But they're only 5 of 18 from beyond the arc. Honestly, that's an area I want to see pick up in the second half. But it has been doing work in the paint. Mm-hmm. Taylor Jenkins challenged the team's physicality, and they've answered the bell so far in game two and it's both sides uh i think you know the points in the paint speak to the offensive production but anthony davis being one for nine with six points tells us jaron jackson xavier tillman and apparently john conchar are uh are doing some work on him so you know that's also incredibly exciting to see and um keeping anthony and davis in check is going to be an incredibly important part of of the of, of styming the lakers uh, without John Morant. So that brings us to kind of the question of the day. King, how does the Memphis Grizzlies look without John Morant in game two? Well, first, I got to go back to one thing you said. Because the John Contra Defensive Player of the Year can- <laughs> campaign starts here. Okay? Check our Twitter for his incredible block where he meets AD at the rim. Twice. Okay? <laughs> Twice and sends him back. Contra on offense was probably a net negative, but those two plays alone gave the Grizzlies a lot of juice. Now, as to how they look without John Morant, what I'm seeing is they're taking more mid-range shots in the half court. In game one, they really challenged Anthony Davis and tried to get all the way to the rim. Didn't work. The man has seven blocks. In this game, you're seeing a much higher percentage of shots coming from that short mid-range, and that's an area where the Grizzlies have been good for years now, and they've been excellent in the first half. They're shooting... 29% of their shots from the short mid, that is a very, very high percentage, and they're making 60% of those shots. So we love to see that. Desmond Bain has really adjusted his own strategy. Going for that pull-up jumper, we even saw Luke Kennard hit one as well. Dylan hit a couple, and that's what you got to do when you're facing such a menace in the paint. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So predictions for the next half. What are you looking for? What adjustments do you want to see from Taylor Jenkins? And uh, how do you see the rest of the game going? Well, I'll be honest. The Lakers aren't going to shoot 36% and a half again. Mm. They're going to shoot worse. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. They, the, the Lakers are going to make a comeback. This is where you're really going to test the Grizzlies' resolve. Can they handle the Lakers' run without their star on the floor? Um, I'm looking for the Grizzlies actually to get up a few more threes in this second half, and hopefully those attempts are coming from Luke Kennard and Desmond Bain so that they can actually go in. Would love to see Jaron Jackson take a couple threes as well. And again, I think we talked about David Roddy in the pregame. I don't know if he was hurt on that Jaron Jackson play, but if he wasn't hurt, I liked yeah. a lot of the things he was doing in the first half. Let's see a little more of him. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, as far as my predictions for the second half and how I'd like to see it going, I think I would, like you said, I'd love to see, you know, more David Roddy. I think he adds a physical presence that you you need. I mean, he's one for two from three-point land. So um, having his shooting presence would also stretch the floor a lot. I think Santi Aldama, even though the counting stats haven't showed anything, I think he's having quietly a very good game. You know, six rebounds, two assists. He just, he looks like he's finding a rhythm, maybe not offensively, but, um, you know, making the plays that are needed. Um, so I'd love to see a little bit more of him. Um, no foul trouble. Great. Fantastic. Let's keep that going. Um, but I- I'm predicting a-, a Grizzlies win here. I think we look great. I think we're in rhythm. I think Desmond Bain, Tyus Jones are running an effective one-two combo. Um, and I think that will extend to this next half. We both predicted a Grizzlies win in game two. We're sticking with that prediction. Hopefully when you see us right back here in about an hour, we are very, very happy. If not, then it's going to be an angry, angry podcast. You I'm won't want to miss it podcast. either way. Yeah. This has been the Hoops Royalty Podcast, and we'll see you in a little bit. See you guys.